Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. Quang Min, a Chinese man, and Fan, his daughter, are the first characters in the movie. Quang is a Chinese pious devotee brought into the world in Guangxi, China. After the war, he used to work in Saigon and escaped to Singapore with his family. From that point onward, they emigrated to London. During the escape, Quan lost two of his daughters, and his wife passed away shortly after giving birth to Fan. Only the two of them were present. However, that all changed when a bombing took place one day in London in Knightsbridge. Quan brought Fan from school so she could drop her off at a store where she planned to look for dresses for their school dance. Fan went first to the boutique after dropping off Quan, while Quan went to get his car. On her way to the boutique, Fan came across a man wearing a helmet. A little brushing up against him made him drop his keys. She entered the boutique after the man left. Quan, on the other hand, was parking his car when he got into a minor accident. He hit another car, and as he got out of the car, a nearby motorcycle burst into flames. Fresh insight about the besieging in London, spread. Additionally, it is being attributed to an unidentified group known as the Authentic Ira. In a dwelling when they heard a knock at the door, two men were watching the news. The other one stood by with a gun in his hand while the first one opened the door. The person wearing a helmet was the one who entered the room and inquired about the number of victims he had. His name was Patrick. Additionally, he was to blame for the bombing. On the other hand, a couple was observed sleeping in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The deputy minister is Liam Hennessy, and Maggie is the woman. Mary, his wife, sent him a text message inquiring about his progress in learning about the bombing. Liam promptly required a gathering to resolve the issue. During the conference, he inquired of each person as to their knowledge of the genuine IRA. The authentic IRA used their code word, which indicates that they are in touch with their command and could also indicate that someone in that very room is a traitor who is working with the authentic IRA. The bombing's explosives were syntax one of their dumps. After that, Liam gave everyone the directive to check the arms dumps in London and elsewhere to see if anything was missing. In SO-15 Central Command, everybody was in the middle of attempting to distinguish the suspect, however they didn't concoct anything as the suspect's bicycle was accounted for taken, with its tag taken from another bicycle. After that, the receptionist called to inform Brahmi that Quan had visited. Quan has been asking them about the bombers once more, this time even offering £20,000, but he has received no response. Before reassuring Quan that they were doing everything in their power to catch the bombers, Brahmi learns about Quan's past and offers his condolences for all of his losses. The offender disheartened, Quan returned home to do his own examination about the occurrence while he was recording notes. He was distracted by the news, which showed Liam Hennessy, deputy minister, being interviewed about the bombing. Lam, a friend of Quan, entered his room to bring him tea and noticed that he was solemnly observing the interview. She opened the blinds and advised Quan to eat something prior to leaving the room, leaving Quan, who was all the while gazing at the TV. Quan called Liam's office to request him for the names from the aircraft, yet Liam couldn't help him. Quan insisted because he did not know the bomber's names, assuming Liam was aware because he was employed by the government. However, Liam recently expressed that while he is to be sure working for the public authority, he doesn't work for the fear mongers. Despite Quan's suggestion that politicians and terrorists are the same thing, Liam remained silent and put the phone down. The picture of Quan and his two daughters, who perished during the escape, was destroyed by fire. Lam also mentioned the newspaper cutout. Upon returning to check on him, I observed what he was doing. So she conversed with him and requested that he quit letting him know that his little girl's passing wasn't his issue. However, Quantum never wavered. He set out with an arrangement to track down the planes himself. He went to Port Larne, Northern Ireland, and by and by visited Liam's office. While Jim, one of Liam's two other subordinates, checked the plastic bag, Liam's secretary asked him to leave. Quan had a load. The two men held Quan to accompany him out, yet Liam emerged from his office and permitted Quan into his office so they could talk. Quan asked Liam once more to provide him with the bomber's names. Liam declined as he truly didn't have the foggiest idea who the aircraft were. When Quan left, he told Liam that he would reconsider not assisting him in determining who killed his child. Quan then went to the bathroom. Before leaving the building, 
He improvised an explosive in the cubicle and locked it. Liam's secretary entered his office saying, sorry, to him for giving Quan access when Quan's shoddy bomb detonated, annihilating just the bathroom and overwhelming everybody. The incident was looked into, and the inspector asked Liam if he knew anyone who might have been responsible, but Liam lied and said he didn't. The investigator then, at that point, said that the besieging was even more an admonition and that the explosives were not a genuine bomb. Quan called the office once more after the inspector left. After picking up the phone, Liam yelled at Quan for setting off a bomb. When Liam refused to provide the names, Quan simply inquired if he had changed his mind and requested a face-to-face -face meeting. All things being equal, Quan dropped the call, baffled. Before calling his nephew Sean, Leon instructed his subordinates to check every guesthouse to determine where Quan was staying. Quan, on the other hand, is in his room making yet another improvised explosive in a parking lot. Two subordinates of Liam were on their way to Liam's car. The other one entered the vehicle and was going to turn over the motor when the other person, Mickey, saw a wire from behind the vehicle prompting the gas, he shouted at the other person inside the vehicle to not take any actions as the vehicle was wired to blow. The gas tank cover was then carefully opened, and he took out a piece of paper with the names written on it. They also learned that Quan wasn't really planning to cause the car to explode because the wire wasn't even in the tank. Instead, it was just a kind of warning for Liam. Liam found out about it. After that, Mickey called them. Who informed us that they had already located Quan's lodgings? Quan should leave Belfast and be discouraged from returning, Liam told his men. Quan was at that point getting ready to leave when he heard the rushed strides of William's men. He obstructed the entryway and attempted to get away from through the rooftop. Be that as it may, his leg was gotten by Mickey. The two battled as Quan battled his direction to the rooftop. He got hit in the head when he got to the rooftop and wound up falling. Fortunately, there was a post he figured out how to get so he could slide down. He entered the lower level through a window and fought William's men on the stairs. When one of the men cornered him, he pulled the man's jacket off and the man fell. After that, the others grabbed him, but Quantum managed to escape, pushing Mickey out the window once more and breaking the window pane. All the while, Quan figured out how to make his departure subsequent to finding out about what occurred. Liam made the decision to remain for some time in the farmhouse he owned. He ordered his wife to pack her belongings. Sean asked Liam when he arrived if he wanted to handle Quan but Liam said no because he wanted Sean to meet so 15's Richard Bromley. So Sean could see them that the bombings aren't their issue and that they need a so 15th assistance to fix the issue. Leon went back to see Maggie, the woman he was having an affair with, the following day. Quan was following him, unbeknownst to him. Furthermore, when he kissed, Maggie snapped a photo of them. As a form of extortion, Quan sent Liam the picture. In the meantime, Sean met with Bromley and offered to help them locate the bombers. Bromley agreed to a single restriction once the suspects are located. The terrorists will be destroyed by SO-15. Not back to Liam by Liam and his men. Despite the fact that he was already inside his farmhouse, he is well aware that quantum threats cannot be sustained even in the farmhouse. That was true, as Quan had already followed them. Quan then went to the farmhouse at night and sneaked inside the barn, covering his car with branches. He established one of his shoddy bombs. Two of William's men considered his presence and searched for him inside the outbuilding. However, Quan was quick to eliminate them. He left the barn and hid on top of a tree branch after putting their unconscious bodies in a cage. He looked as the horse shelter detonated and everybody came running out in his room. Mary, Liam's irritated wife, was in the conversation with him. She loathed how Liam is trifling with Quan's alerts as well, so she chose to remain at their girl's condo for some time until Liam's finished managing his own concerns. In the meantime, the genuine fear mongers were arranging one more bombarding on a plane in a bar. Ian Wood, a writer who covered the London besieging, is drinking, as he composes another article. Maggie sits next to him and interrupts his rants. In Liam's farmhouse, the two then introduced themselves to one another. When they heard a loud explosion, Liam was in the kitchen instructing one of his men to take Mary to the apartment of their daughter for Mary's safety. They went to investigate and discovered that Liam's car had exploded. In the woods, Liam instructed his men to look for Quan. 
The group set out for the woods, but three men fell into Quan's traps and were unable to escape. As he demanded the names of the bombers, Quan choked one of them. At the point when he had chance on his shoulder, Quan quickly took off to try not to get found out. Liam was dissatisfied once more in the kitchen because they were unable to catch Quan. His subordinate, Jim, let Liam know that they required a tracker who knows the forest to beat Quan unexpectedly. And Sean has been picked by Liam to do it. Meanwhile, Sean paid Mary a visit, who had already entered the apartment of her daughter. Very much like Liam, Mary has been going behind his back with Sean. Mary and Sean were getting it on in the room when Sean got a call from Liam. Liam advised Sean to let Bromley know that he acknowledged his terms and furthermore requested Sean to deal with Quan in the forest. After the call, Sean sat down on a bed and Mary inquired about Liam. Sean discussed Liam and the code word that Liam had previously altered. After that, Mary discussed her brother with Sean. Mary was wrapped in a hug by Sean. Quan is laying on a tent he made from branches. He then applied pressure to the wound with his heated knife, before falling asleep. He recollected what occurred in those days during their departure and how his girls were caught. Liam found out about Quan's past there because he is doing his own research on Quan. Quan was a veteran trooper and one of the deadliest ones at that. He was a piece of an extraordinary powers bunch caught in Saigon and invested energy in jail. Jim knocked on his door while Liam was busy and informed him that Hugh McGrath had come to see him. Liam and McGrath had a question. McGrath was aware of Mary's location and everything that had transpired so far with Liam. Add 10 kilograms of Semtex to that, which was utilized in the besieging, were absent in McGrath's stumps. Both McGrath and Liam were suspicious of McGrath, and McGrath questioned Liam's loyalty. Following the argument, Jim was instructed by Liam to conduct an investigation into McGrath after Liam called Jim. After that, Liam returned to his office to find his dog unconscious. He really looked at his drawers and saw that something was absent. When Quan showed up, he told Liam that the dog was just sleeping and pointed a gun at him. Liam was unable to respond when Quan asked for names once more. After that, Liam said that he would get the names as soon as he changed the IRA's code name. At the point when the following besieging occurs, the fear-based oppressors will involve the code word to guarantee liability regarding the bombarding and will say that they're the IRA. Be that as it may, since Liam has changed the code word, he'll know who the planes are. Quan passed on allowing Liam one day to give him the names in the so. Bromley was reviewing the bomber's CCTV footage at headquarters 15 when he noticed the man had a birthmark on his hand. Maggie, on the other hand, got off a bus and rode a guy's bike. The person is Fisher, one of the fear mongers, later on the transport that Maggie was simply unexploded so. 15 went right to the scene of the latest bombing to look into it, and Brahmi called Liam to tell him that the bombers called, but they didn't say anything in code. Liam became suspicious because the terrorists were aware of everything that was going on around him and only he and Sean were aware that the code word had changed. Additionally, Sean's affair with his wife came to Liam's attention. Also, after Sean visited Mary, Mary called Hume McGrath. McGrath returned to Liam, but this time he was cornered by Liam, who questioned him. Liam found out that Maggie was one of the terrorists and that her real name was Sarah McKay there. After that, Liam shot and killed McGrath. Maggie, who is currently known as Sarah, utilized Ian Wood and established a bomb on his PC, which would detonate once he got on a plane. In the meantime, Quan and Sean engaged in combat in the woods, with Quan ultimately winning. Sean gave Quan the names he wanted. Quan then released him. Sean returned to Liam, where Liam let him know that he realized Sean was having an unsanctioned romance with Mary and that Mary just utilized Sean to get data she could give him a diagram. Liam then, at that point, requested him to kill Mary. The following day, the police went to the fear mongers, conceal out and encompass the region. They were anticipating an opening for an attack. Quan entered the room in the disguise of a gas man as he entered. Quan and the terrorists engaged in a shootout when Fisher, who was hiding, saw the gun. All but Sarah were killed by Quan, and before he left, the police stormed in and questioned Sarah. Additionally, they killed Ian Woods when she informed them that a bomb had been placed on his laptop. The airport police then sought Ian Wood when they found him. One of the police officers quickly took the PC and went for it, 
tossing it on the stacking span where nobody was near. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured when the bomb went off. After everything, Liam went to London. He was to surrender to the authorities and provide them. With all the information he had, Sean killed Mary. Once Liam returned, Quan paid him a visit now that he was aware that Liam was the one who had planned everything. Quan persuaded Liam to send the photos after Liam apologized to him, so that the entire world would be aware that Liam Hindi is a terrorist. Quan returned home unaware that the So was observing him. 15 When Bromley heard that Quan was headed home, he told him not to arrest him because Quan had helped them. Lam, after all, saw Quan and immediately approached him. She gave Quan a kiss and then hugged him. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.